Hello, Ryan here from RLF Vacuum Cleaner and Lake Heath. And in today's video, we're going to be making one about single phase motors and how to test them. Uh, this particular motor is out of a floor scrubber. Uh, it runs on single phase. It also has the dual capacitors and a potential relay. So we'll, we'll talk you through the whole entire process of checking these motors over. First of all, it's all about the visual. What can you see and what can you smell? Uh, this particular motor, everything looks all right. All the connectors are on there nice and tight. And nothing burnt. All the wires look good. Uh, there's one of these little plastic bits missing off here. So we'll see if we can find another one of them. But it doesn't actually look, it's not the end of the world. Nothing looks burnt, nothing looks broken. Capacitors look all right. They're not bulged or split. So your visual, everything looks all right. So your second test is your resistance on the windings. On a single phase motor, you have two windings. You have your main winding and you have an auxiliary winding, which is just basically two coils of wire that both meet in the same place. They both meet at neutral. So the theory is that if you measure one winding to neutral, you get a resistance reading and then you'll take the other winding to neutral you get a reading and then if you go winding to winding going through neutral you should roughly be the same number you should roughly get the same number or, or same resistance if you get different resistance it usually means you've probably got a short circuit or something but we'll go through that in a moment so coming up this motor you have three windings you have your blue which is your neutral you have your brown, which is your uh, what do you want to call it? Live main winding. Then you have your red, which is your auxiliary. And if you want to know how these motors work, I actually made a fully comprehensive video. This is just going to be testing. So I've got our multimeter, got some resistance. So we want to measure red to blue. So red to blue. We're getting about 10, say 10 and a half ohms. And then we want to go from brown to blue. Four ohms. So then if we go brown to red, get about 13 ohms, which is about right. Oop, not the camera. So we have continuity of the windings. They're not short circuit or open circuit which is good. Now we move on to the bigger tester. Oh no, before we do that actually, we'll, we'll actually test this potential relay. Uh, when we check the potential relay, we want to unplug it so that removes any parallel paths. Uh, these particular relays run at about 10k. We're getting about 9.8k, so about roughly in the right area. So I'll just reconnect them all up. So continuity wise, everything is all good. Replug them all in. So next we move on to insulation resistance. Make sure that we are all good. Make sure we've got no shorts to earth. So I'll grab the IR tester. And so I just brought in the IR tester here. And what we're going to do is we're going to check between all the connections. So we're going to check between neutral and earth, standard winding or just the winding and the auxiliary winding to earth. Make sure they're all good. So we'll turn that on. So neutral to earth. Ooh. Try not to get my hand in the way. So neutral to earth, nothing. Ooh, auxiliary winding to earth, nothing. Or oh, even earth, nothing. And just make sure the test is actually working. If we go earth to earth, zero. So that's that test complete. Now we'll test the capacitors. I'll go 
from there. Uh, one other thing to check, especially on motors like this, is sometimes you get people change the capacitors but they put the wrong one in. On these particular motors, I don't know how the camera is going to pick this up, but we try to zoom in a bit. Zoom in. But basically, I'll, if I can, I'll get future Ryan to take a picture and put it on the screen. Uh, we have capacitor type 25 UF, 440 volt. And then we have 150 UF and 275. I can see that that one there is 25 UF. That one there is 150. Yes, we've got the right capacitors in there. What we'll do is we'll have the test leads. Bring in my fluke again. Bring the fluke in. That's when we're testing capacitor. It's always best to remove the wires, remove any parallel paths. Now this particular fluke multimeter is a bit slow on capacitance, so put the leads on. On there we are. 176 UF. When it's rated 100. It's 150 plus or minus 25 percent. So it was 25 percent of 150. Um, 10 percent would be 15. So yeah, so 20 cents, 180. So yeah, we're in tolerance there. And then we'll do we'll do the other one here. Just connect the wires up again, so we don't get them mixed up. Oh, that be very good. So we got the wires disconnected, and we'll test them again. Again, we're getting 23.7 UF, which on this one is 25 plus or minus 5%. So, what's 5%? That'd be 23.2 plus or minus 5% so 10% would be 2.5 so that would be 1.2 oh we're bang on the limit there Ooh. um as soon as how this machine to be fair 23.7 we're just over um we'll leave that one in there Simply because I haven't got another one of these in at the moment. Another one of these 25 UF capacitors. That is the test procedure and of course the one thing I didn't mention was check to actually make sure it's nice and free. Everything spins alright. Yeah that spins nice and freely. Fan's not damaged. Visual inspection's good. Resistance is good, insulation resistance is good, relay is good, and the capacitor is good. So this is a good motor, which we will put on the pile. And when we need to do a motor swap, or do a refurbishment, we'll put this one in, because it's fully tested. And we'll take the other one out and work on it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.